Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, we welcome you to the third edition of Alan Speaks on the Go. We have we have Anil Nair for the uh, as the speaker for the day. Anil is from the batch of 1997. Currently, he is the CEO at VML Vyanar, responsible for driving growth and building the company's fully integrated service offering in creative, technological, and data sectors. His core area of interests are brand consulting, business for good, digital transformation, and culture building. He regularly contributes articles for various advertising and market-based publications. Uh, we welcome you, Anil. Next you. up, we have our host, Upendra Namburi from the batch of 1996. Upendra is also the alumni executive committee member for the Simpsar Alumni Association. Uh, Upendra is a business leader with rich experience in insurance, payments, credit cards, loyalty, and banking. He's currently the founder of Idea Earth. Before starting Idea Earth, he was the chief innovation and marketing officer with Bharti AXA. Uh, Upendra is also a, a best selling author, an Abbey Award winner, a columnist, and a speaker at various forums. Uh, Upendra, welcome you as well. Hey, thank you, Arvind. Right. Hey, Anil. Uh, so good to catch up after many years. Um, uh, different from the days of the campus and meeting behind the building, I would imagine. Uh, but uh, great to have you on the show. And thanks for taking the time, Arvind. Thank you. Thank you, Pindra. And uh, uh, since you started off with this entire campus uh, store incident, I had the pleasure of going back to campus over the last year and I was amazed at how much it has changed. Uh, what was like sleepy Vidya Vihar at some point is today bustling and, and, and you know, the, the sports facilities have improved. Even, uh, you know, the Simpson campus has become much larger with lots of passageways. And, uh, but, but some of the things were still there, you know. I went and stood behind... Uh, you know, uh, where where we would take a cup of chai and kind of hang around in between classes. And it was still the same feeling. So, so some things don't change. No, that's good. And I think in these times, we need uh, those anchor moments to hold us on our feet. And yes, yes uh, the campus has evolved. Uh, you, of course, have evolved phenomenally after college. You've been doing a ton of exciting stuff. Congratulations on that. Um, mm -hmm. So, Anil, what I thought we'll do today is uh, basically catch up on two, three things and keep it more forward-looking uh, because you have a ton of experience and possibly leverage uh, your vast, rich insights into consumers, into businesses and markets and try and figure out where we should go here on. All right. Um, so, coming straight to the midst of the action, right, uh, and this is hot on everyone's mind. Uh, it's been around a few months after COVID uh, hit the Indian shores. Um, what's your assessment uh, of the industry? What's really happening there? Uh, can you give me a pulse? Because you work in a very wide set of industries. So a quick pulse of what's happening with brands and what's happening with businesses right now. Sure. So uh, first off the bat, nobody was expecting a pandemic of this nature to come by. Even uh, in the first week of lockdown, I remember uh, my HR person came to me and said, Anil, we may have to lock down for a few days. And I said, uh, you know, let's review it maybe midweek. And midweek went on to a week and then a couple of weeks. So, uh, you know, I want to kind of uh, divide it into two or three phases. I think the the first uh, 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 maybe two weeks was bewilderment. People didn't know what to expect. Then came a bit of shock. Uh, and, you know, these emotions have been uh, flowing after that. But to, uh, uh, to come back to most marketeers and most brands and most businesses, uh, they also followed a similar pattern. Uh, uh, they did not, to be very honest, expect this to last so long. So that's the number one kind of starting point in the sense. Number two is that the, 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 the malaise is much deeper because this not only hit uh, the top of the funnel, it also hit the bottom of the funnel. So everything from manufacturing to supply chain to brand building, everything got disturbed at one. 
after that it been a, a race to recover in the sense and the recovery in most cases is not 100% okay so in certain industries uh, like for example be it uh, the cinema industry the retail industry the restaurant business you know uh, to uh, some of the businesses brands that i work with which is uh, toothpaste for example or, or um, uh, brands that make laptops the recovery is more in that sense but uh, i don't see uh, a 100% recovery i don't know in 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 any of the industries that i that i connect with so even at this point people are kind of picking up the spoils okay um and i must ask you this right so you've been working with some of these brands some of your relationships with clients would be a little more shorter tenure uh, some you may have a deeper longer relationship either with the category or the brand so when you have a brand sitting with you as an agency partner and saying hey all hell has broken loose right can you tell me what are some of those conversations uh, because obviously it's a scenario where uh there is a knowledge blackout on both sides correct um it's a total blackout on both sides it's the unknown so how do two teams manage an unknown and some interesting examples of some outcomes for you totally so uh, you know when there is confusion and when there is uncertainty it's also a fountain for innovation so uh, uh, sure. right talk let me kind of tell you that normally it is one or the other person having a certain perspective and then trying to convince it's either the agency trying to convince the marketer on the other side or the marketer trying to convert the agency based on prior knowledge of precedent in this case there was no precedent so it was almost like a level playing field of ignorance that that you start off with the uh, number one uh, area is to safeguard the brand and ring fence the brand okay so, so we start off with that uh, assumption which is uh you know normally there is a bit of banter there is a bit of you know to and fro because the brand is a moving stream of consciousness at some point the agency is trying to push the bar the, the marketer is trying to push the bar but in this case there is a fundamental threat to the existence of the brand and the category and the first step is to kind of protect that the second step is uh, you know to quickly scan the environment so some of the exercises that we did with most of our partners is uh, thanks to uh, the 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 sheer reach of wpp and and the various organizations that exist within the wpp there was a fountain of knowledge that we could kind of dip into and therefore whether be it across the world whether be it from some of the greatest thinkers in the world right now be it from the category uh, uh, other brands how do we kind of aggregate all this knowledge to see because, uh, you know uh, what are people doing in a similar time scale as you are because if we can't reach out into the past and if we can't look into the future then the first thing to do is to look around you and to see what are what are what are the others doing and trust me everybody as in uh, you know uh, uh, every marketer out there every big uh, you know marketing visionary out there at a point of view our job was to aggregate and synthesize this information and take it to our clients so the first uh, one month upendra there was a lot of knowledge sharing to the level of something that we haven't done before we otherwise are campaign led or we have our regular catch ups but uh, uh, on most of our key clients there was a lot of discussion at least a week to week discussion on uh, uh, where we are going where what the market and what the environment what is happening okay um all right um but nice tell me to something on No, I said it was nice to see your son come and order you about. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Anil, when you talk about protecting a brand, um, can you help me understand what that means in very simple words? Sure. Uh, uh, a brand is an idea in in the in the customer's head in, in that sense. Sure. And uh, brands have a lifespan. They, you know, and, and most brands are like a, a point in time. You know, what you think about the brand vis-a-vis -vis what is there around you. Uh, customers are used to, uh, you know, them having access to the brand as quickly and easy as possible. And suddenly there is a break in the pattern. Okay, I am not getting my favorite toothpaste. I am uh, not, uh, you know, I can't go and touch and feel my the car that I so love. and what basically happens is uh, you know there are there are a couple of things that can happen in the customer's mind he can either wait for you, for for your brand 
or he can downgrade or upgrade or he can kind of reframe his need for this category product or the brand and that honestly is dangerous any kind of pattern break is dangerous so when i said our job to ring fence the brand and to protect the brand is to ensure when your brand experience is been is been interrupted how do you still kind of go out there uh, reach out to your customer assure him that everything is okay and kind of communicate to him uh, you know the waiting time or or the delay in in uh, us being able to uh, give the customer uh, the experience that he used got it and uh, you know they actually say uh, hindsight vision is the best vision and so on so now that we've gone through a four month learning curve what do you think brands and team members could have done differently um, so because now we've done a ton of stuff many of them have gone wrong few have gone right uh, so let's say there is a next crisis do we have any learnings not that we're through with this crisis yeah uh, because crisis management is one of the foremost uh, aspects of leadership Sure. What do you think are some of the stuff which leaders have done well in a crisis, and what could have been better? Yeah. So this is a very interesting question, Upendra, that you asked, and one that is really close to my heart. Uh, the first piece is uh, authenticity. You know, somewhere I feel brands need to go back and find their authentic voice. Every brand has it. That's the reason why it starts and then it becomes such a uh, big property at some point. but uh, somewhere brands seem to lose it uh, along the way given the pressures of brand building given the size and like that i think it's important to go back and find that authentic voice and cust- and your the, the the customer likes an authentic voice and especially in times of crisis like this that's point number 1 the second thing is uh, a very very abused thing called brand purpose you know it it gets relegated to a a, a, a string of five senseless words in a on a website somewhere and if you see most brands tend to end up having those same kind of uh, you know um, uh, uh, highfalutin kind of words the point is can you go revisit your brand purpose and figure out why do you exist because if you know why you exist then in times like these you will know how to pivot and how to change uh, the third area is future proofing i believe that whether you have a crisis or you do not have a crisis going forward even if things get extremely rosy and we do not see a crisis for the next 10 years or 20 years or 100 years everybody should have a plan b uh, a future proofing plan always in motion you can call it innovation innovation pipeline you can call it whatever else you want to because in times like this um, uh, 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 you know that 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 innovation plan helps because uh, brands that have had it have have been able to easily make the transformation last but not the least is agility uh, uh it's like exercise you know you you cannot uh, not work your body out and then suddenly if there is danger and you have to run away you know you can't run away that quickly because your muscles aren't used to the running even in peace times brands need to practice being agile okay so with that and i like no so i'm going to summarize right so authenticity brand purpose future proofing and agility Okay. Yes. I'm going to pick you up on authenticity. Uh, so I remember one tweet which I read on Big Basket, and I think this is in the second or the third month of lockdown. I loved it when the CEO on his personal handle came and tweeted, "Hey guys, we buggered up. We are doing our best. We are trying to find a balance between the health and protection and safety of our staff and yours as well. We are equally responsible for everything." I know we are running a backlog, and he actually wrote a massive tweet outlining everything, every issue they were facing, what they were doing wrong, and how they are trying to correct it. And I don't think there was any need for them to get into such detail. Uh, but yes, I personally had a very different respect for that yes. brand after that singular tweet. Yes. And it's a very simple action. It possibly took him half an hour to draft it, uh, but it said a lot. totally totally and uh, the market is replete with examples such as this of uh, brands that have shown their human side by raising their hands and saying listen i'm trying but this is the best that i can do bear with me as opposed to you know the hyperbole that normally exists 
in, in, in brand building and, and, and that's the way it ends up happening. That's one big stellar thing that for me stood out on this crisis is honest to God uh, brands that have just kind of come in there and, and where the relationship has been more equal rather than a talking down or a talking up kind of a relationship that is that normally exists between brands and consumers. Uh, and I'm glad you raised it actually. Uh, this entire principle of talking down and talking at or talking up. Um, now there is crap on both sides, like the larger environment. Are you seeing more honest and frank conversations with brands as well? Are you seeing them to be more honest and transparent now than they were before? It's easier said than done, uh, Upendra. You know, that is the ideal state scenario. Uh, but has the needle moved? The needle is moving. The needle is moving. At least it's entered the consciousness of people because it's a, it's a, uh, you know, a, a stimulus response kind of a thing where marketeers are seeing other marketeers who are having these conversations get favorable kind of response back from, uh, from their customers. Uh, and therefore, there, there, there is a sense of realization that sometimes it also pays to have these authentic, direct conversations with your, uh, with your customers, number one. And number two, it is okay to get some flack because, you know, traditional advertising and brand building has always been in the super controlled environment where all negative messages have to be erased before the CEO sees it. Today, uh, you know, it is okay if a few messages come off because it just shows that your brand is human. And your brand is real and, and nobody can be, you know, 100% uh, perfect. And this tale leads me to a, a fantastic example that I saw of a bank called Lloyd's Bank, which literally had the goal to, uh, you know, they had, a, they had a meter that they displayed on their website, which said uh, people who like me today and people who don't like me today. And, and, and <laughs> it just made the brand that much more endearing to see that, hey, this is a brand like ours. And, and, and it, it, it reduces a million negative, uh, what you call, comments in one go. Okay. Uh, the other point I want to pick you on is, and we spoke about this a couple of weeks back when we first reconnected, uh, on agility, right? Uh, very often spoken, uh, but very few are able to implement it uh, because, as you rightly said, they're not used to it. And even if they are, they're used to it in a very different environment when you had your team sitting in front of you. So any interesting examples you'd like to share of where a brand picked up on something and the agency, the brand got together and rolled out something in a rapid pace. Yeah. Uh, couple of examples. Uh, uh, before I go on to those examples, I just want to talk about agility uh, needs practice. You know, you, you need to practice that muscle. It's almost like a fire drill. Muscle memory. Muscle memory. So you need to make that part of muscle memory, uh, uh, you know, so uh, you can't suddenly discover agility one fine day or it's something that you cannot prepare. Even if I tell you that there's a pandemic coming, a month is not good enough. It has to be ingrained in people. That's number one. Uh, a couple of areas which we managed to kind of do some really quick stuff. One was uh, for one of our brands. It was uh, one of India's leading uh, uh, tooth, uh, you know, tooth care, uh, uh, oral care brands in that sense. And uh, they had a huge suite of dentists. Uh, uh, because of this pandemic, the dentists couldn't kind of connect with their patients. The people were suffering and the, the, the credo of that company was to put a smile on, on to people's faces. Uh, somewhere the entire equation was kind of getting disturbed because of the pandemic. And which is where, uh, you know, we, uh, the, the, we had a brainstorm with the client, those weekly brainstorms I was talking about. And one of the solutions uh, that came and which came almost from like a wish saying that uh, I wish, you know, we could still allow dentists and patients to connect with each other. And within 20 days, we literally created a platform uh, 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 which allowed, uh, you know, ordinary people on the street to have a free consultation with the dentist because uh, uh, dental pain is one of the worst things known to humankind. And, and, it, and, and there is no time when it hits. It could be in the middle of the night. It could be. So access to those dentists was... Uh, it went beyond selling uh, cans of toothpaste, honestly. You know, sure. it went beyond service. And, and that was an example of agility. And that happened also because there were, there were a few prior conversations that were already going on. Not in this, uh, not in this line, but in, in some other areas, which allowed us to quickly pivot and then get that going. 
The other piece uh, area, one of my clients is Big Bazaar. And I, uh, I was really in awe of everything that they have done to literally change their business model uh, to, to, to uh, you know, it's hypermarket. It's a, a series of hypermarkets, giant stores across the country, um, uh, millions of uh, uh, SKUs uh, roaming in and out uh, of their various stores. Uh, the government had put a list and every day the list of essentials was either growing or degrowing or, or, or whatever. Uh, many of their stores were getting into uh, red zones and green zones and orange zones and, and it, that, everything was changing. But yet, uh, you know, I go back to those three or four things, which is agility, brand purpose, uh, uh, authenticity. They literally changed their business model. They got into e-commerce during the pandemic, which is completely against what they know to do. They, they said, if uh, the customer won't come to us, we will go to the customer. So they had group shopping uh, via housing societies. So they allowed that to happen. They literally converted uh, employees into shopping avatars. So Pindra could sit at home, call up the guy, and that guy would be your eyes and ears within the shop. So he would literally walk around and, and, and shop for you. And then they would kind of uh, drop things back home. So my point is uh, that for me is an example of uh, you know what how ready brands need to be in times like this. And this is just one example. Tomorrow it could be anything else. It could be a asteroid hit, or it could be uh, it could be you know many other things that could come our way. Uh, then I'm going to take you to another side, which is getting very close to the rea realities of the ground, right? Uh, so what I hear is there are many brands who are crashing their marketing budgets downwards. They're slicing it, dicing it, cutting it. Correct. Uh, the reality is uh, we are all running businesses. Uh, you're heading a business, a brand is heading a business, right? So when the revenues or the standard billing norms come crashing, how do you show value for what you're charging? Uh, because it's no more about just saying, hey, I'm going to do your media plan. I'm going to do a hundred posts in a day and so on. Uh, the norm is changing. So uh, any learnings, any thoughts, how do you demonstrate value as a partner to a brand? when the parameters are changing so drastically? Yeah. Again, a very interesting question. It, uh, you know, it's a function of your, uh, how di uh, dimensional your business is. And I genuinely believe that your uh, most businesses going into the future need to be polydimensional in that sense. So that if two or three uh, do not, you know, work, the, you can you can activate a few other dimensions to kick in, and I'll give you an example of my business because I can't talk about uh, many other businesses. There is uh, right at the start of the year, uh, we divided our business into three verticals. One is campaigns and content. Uh, the second is uh, customer exp client ex customer experience CX, and the third one is commerce. You know, the majority of our business used to happen in campaigns and content. The other two was uh, you know. Uh, seeding businesses in that sense but in times like this it is the latter two that has come to the rescue because brands are are you know the campaign side is kind of slightly stagnating because there are there is there are no channels out there there are no media properties so it's it's kind of you know people are still uh, future planning on brands but not at what would have happened at this time of the year we are right at the uh, on the you know the verge of uh, festive season this is when most brands are hyperactive at this point, but brands are asking other questions. Uh, people, brands are asking, how can I create a virtual showroom? How do I, you know, my banking customers are not come to me. How do I, are not coming into my, into, how, how do I still recreate that? Uh, what can I do with a large database of people that I already have? It's a dead database. Can you activate it for me? You know, uh, I would like my uh, front-end employees to be uh, gainfully employed. Can you figure a way out where you can use a nice intelligent chatbot and the knowledge that exists within these employees? How do you mash the two together? You know, how do you allow me, how, how can you quickly get me e-commerce enabled in the next one month? So, the, if some set of questions have, uh, what do you call, died down, another set of opportunities and problems have also arisen in that sense. 
but that will only happen if you if you if you have a multi polydimensional kind of an identity as a base and i'm glad you raised this and my bad i should have actually started with this it just slipped my mind uh, you're actually setting up a blueprint for a very different agency and that's what you're doing uh, these are words that i wouldn't typically have heard of in a context of an agency uh, even 5 years back right uh, so you're talking about customer experience and things like that uh, so tell me something what were the seeding thoughts for doing something like this uh with your team and with your agency and what's been the early experience uh in the indian market in this new model sure so uh, as we all know the agency model is one of the oldest models that have existed so there have always been brands brands have tried to in-house agencies uh then they've outhouse them um uh, but it's always been uh, uh, you know a, a marketing problem needing a communication solution and then there was the entire media house piece uh, you put up an uh, some kind of a, a piece of communication out there the results came back in in 3 months 6 months uh, you know hopefully in the market we did an annual brand audit and it told us whether the brand has moved from x to y what's the kind of delta and uh, over the last uh, you know 10 15 years the internet has changed everything the digital economy has changed everything uh and and everything that you see now is in response to that so uh we can either look towards the past or you can kind of you know like you said the theme of this conversation is looking towards the future and the future the dynamics have changed the denominator has changed and therefore for this changing denominator you last key uh what what are those things that have changed uh, the the definition of uh, consumer target audience has changed the defini- definition of uh, targeting has changed so so considering that uh, you know you and me have, are on our mobile phone for 16 hours of the day uh, is it how do you classify it do you classify it as a medium or do you classify it as uh, you know as as a, as a as a way of life uh, as an experience that is embedded an extension of of your of your product in the sense or your or a service uh, that you that you are kind of offering you know the fact that you and me are emitting data every second of the day turns this entire thing on its head as to are we the intended uh, target or are we also part of the offering in the sense that, you know you, you, we have also become a commodity because of the sheer amount of data so there is a lot of fundamental shifts that are that are kind of happening and to address the shift to address the always on nature of the world right now he address the fact that geography is history he address the fact that the 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 what we you and me are speaking right now can be seen by anybody all over the world and that i'm talking about the, all the 7 billion or 6 billion residents of the world instantly if both of us were that famous but my point is these are these are these are very very fundamental kind of shifts okay and and uh, to to address these shifts you need a new kind of agency and uh, even in the wpp scheme of things vml yr has been spun uh, as as an entity so vml yr is two, two organizations coming together vml um, uh, and yr uh, vml is a kansas city based agency yr is the the, the great yr one of the uh, 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 powerhouses of advertising they bought them together so uh, vinar has a lot of great creativity lot of original thinking tools vml has uh, a lot of these new technology practices uh, a, a whole new approach to to cx to commerce and 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 and, 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 and we have put all of this in a pot and and we are cooking it and and the and the impact has been interesting okay uh, and i have to ask you this right um we talk about agility we talk about transformation uh we don't seem to be talking enough about unlearning uh be it uh be it with our teams be it with the larger environments and so on um so when you're creating a new dna of this format right um how do brands react to you yes. because they are used to a certain format of interaction and capabilities Yes. So, do you have to end up in going saying, "Hey, th- this is what I do, and this is why I'm different"? 
Yes, no, it's such a fascinating question, Upendra, and you've asked two questions in one, and uh, one of them is the entire concept of unlearning. Uh, I wish man, humankind had the humility to understand the word called unlearning, and if we could have a national unlearning week where we could all collectively <laughs> unlearn everything that we are supposed to unlearn, but uh, that's not the nature of, of human beings. We will not admit the unlearning. We will all do that in our personal capacity, but which is okay. Uh, the second piece is uh, how do uh, the clients perceive us? To be very, very honest, it's been, uh, I've been with them, uh, you know, for a, a greater part of the year. It's difficult because uh, people have some preconceived notion as to what a creative agency should be. Even in creative agency, there are, there are the mainline agencies and then there are the digital agencies. And then we walk in like cowboys saying we can do this and this and this. They just don't get it. They're like, you know, you can either make these large, beautiful TVCs or you can make these dull, boring e-commerce websites. Don't tell me you can make both. But, uh, but it's interesting and, and that's the reason I joined this business, uh, to be honest. Uh, you know, the fact that uh, the variables are a million, the fact that every day is different, the fact that there is a lot of, you know, uh, those, uh, 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 those old traditional car, say, car salesmen mentality that you need to do makes it fascinating there's a lot of okay. concept selling that you need to do and all right now the buzzword is digitization right and i use it as a term buzzword uh, because it hurts me when people use that word fairly liberally right um so if I am, and I'm just going to take an example and I'm linking this to one of the questions which has come in, right? So one of the audience members has said that um, basically in the context of a coaching institute, correct? But I'm going to kind of broad base it, okay? So if we look at the economy as touch brands and non-touch brands, a touch brand is one who actually connects and transacts with an end consumer and a non-touch being they work through distributors and retailers broadly, right? So if I am a non-touch business, right, like toothpaste and so on, where I'm not the one selling directly, can you run me through what is the ABC of digital that I should be doing as a non-touch brand today? Sure. You know, as much as uh, you've uh, classified this into touch and non-touch, you know, uh, uh, as a practitioner, uh, uh, I just... It's very uh, fuzzy, I know, but you need a starting point. You need a starting point, yes. So my point is, uh, are you, a, are you a, 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 a findable brand or a non-findable brand? I don't even know whether findable is correct English, but I'm saying... And what it I is mean now, by because you've said it. Yes. <laughs> what I'm saying by findable and non-findable is if you are a non-touch brand, and uh, let me give you an example... You're a non-touch brand and you have a, a, a worm in your soup that you're making. I, you know, as a customer, suddenly I've come home. I need a hot uh, cup of soup and I find this worm and I'm desperately looking all over the internet to find who this company is so that I can complain to them. I literally investigate my way through and I find the uh, personal email ID of the CEO and I complain to him or I abuse him or I take him out and... and string the brand up on Twitter, you know, honestly, today, uh, it doesn't really matter because, uh, yes, uh, a, a high touch brand needs to be that much more out there. Uh, a non-touch brand may, you know, the, 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 the ratios may differ, but uh, uh, being an ostrich is today not an option. That's number one. Number two, from a, a hygiene perspective, uh, for me, uh, the first level is, and I, I, I take it as hero hub hygiene, which is you need your hygiene things in place. So a good website is a hygiene. Uh, doing your Google My Business and ensuring that all your partners, addresses, maps, everything in place is a hygiene. Figuring out that there are enough people who are uh, you know, encouraging your customers to give uh, customer feedback online so that that adds to the larger SEO is hygiene. Uh, figuring out what social media channels do you, you need to be, need to, as in not fashionable to be in. And, 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 and are, you, uh, uh, are you there uh, uh, constantly with the presence and, and, and reacting to people? 
uh, that uh, today has become an hygiene uh, allowing customers access to you and when i mean it has to be like a one touch uh, uh, across digital access and that access can be through the website it can be through twitter it can be through a call center it can be any of those we have the assumption that only something that you put up on the web or the mobile is digital there are many other digital touch points first level for me for most of these non touch brands is to at least examine your hygiene uh, you know areas that you need to be looking at and last but not the least yeah you know you may have analytics coming from facebook you may have analytics coming from your website just on a sunday once a month just from a pleasure perspective go through the analytics it may throw some interesting you know surprises for you okay uh the other challenge which i hear from a lot of businesses is um and you know you said i need to have a website i need to have social media i need to have analytics these are a ton of words and for a medium enterprise and even in many large enterprises uh, these are very diverse skill sets right uh, sure. so in the context of a small and medium business right any tips for how can they build their capability to take on these animals so i've seen a ton of guys who start an insta page and they suddenly just flounder after that trying sure. to figure out how to keep the engine moving sure um, so there are too many things happening uh, too many skill sets too complex any tips for a small and medium business sure i just want to juxtapose this upendra uh, visavi uh, you know the so called new internet businesses that have started up started by you know the so called you know the millennials or we are uh, kind of people uh, they are a mirror with uh, what you call an inversion of the so called brands that you are talking about they also have a product they have limited budgets they are literally taking this as an opportunity rather than the other way around where basically sure. being on digital is a inherent success what you call factor in ensuring success for you at the marketplace and the moment you look at it that way you change the definition and the game completely so for example if i need to make a, 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 a jar of jam i still need to know how to collect the fruits from how to mix it how to put it in a bottle bottling plant packaging labeling distribution i still need to know all of this and these this, these are quite complex processes in the sense one process you need to add is this digital process but the only thing is is it going to be outside of you or whether it's going to be inside of you and i saw your son coming uh, run past uh, half an hour ago trust me when he grows up those will be organic to him as opposed to our right. generation and generations where this is external to us i don't yeah. know how to it's a little switch that you need to switch on in your head otherwise it can all look extremely forbidding and monstrous okay so first step is going digital and then the second is a holy grail of commerce right so as you said you have a hygiene and then you have presence so when you're having a conversation with a ceo or a head of marketing or a head of business saying hey i want to start selling online all right um and they have a decent hygiene level of social uh, findability right what are your three steps or three tips of advice to them how uh, should they go about it and what should they watch out for is this specifically related to commerce yes so yes. i want to sell online one is sure. saying i am there online i am connected i am on social and stuff Yes. but i'm taking that huge leap to selling online yes i want to give you this example of a brand that uh, we manage called big bazaar again okay uh, big bazaar is an completely offline store uh, uh, the you know and and they have a certain uh, tag uh, uh, you know tg that comes and shops if you ever been to a big bazaar it's like it's a it's a very welcoming it's the indian bazaar taken into a into rarefied settings they allow you to be messy uh, you know you can you can kind of pick stuff up give it back return it's a very comfortable place for the for the average indian family to go go and shop correct uh, the entire spread and the and the width is there uh, uh, digital was a bit of a like a 
is like a, 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 a question mark for them as to what do we do on digital? We don't have e-commerce. Uh, you know, uh, why should we even kind of waste money, speak to people on digital? We've been on a journey uh, with them where we realized that, you know, if the if a certain generation is buying from Big Bazaar physically, maybe the child of that generation must be on digital. How can we connect to this particular generation in the space? What we did was we rolled out a series of steps and measures and connecting with them. We took channel by channel and we figured out, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is it that we need to do on Google. So we did, uh, we created an activity called Google Smart Search. On Twitter, we said everybody is out to kind of be a little vicious with each other. So we said we'll allow people to decide the price. So there was a Twitter decide your price. There was a cooking channel on YouTube. And lo and behold, without even having any e-commerce, uh, we started generating business from all these channels. And all we did was a simple uh, missed call and a coupon that was delivered to them. The point that I'm trying to make is you don't need to be on commerce channels to start e-commerce. Okay. Interesting. What, what you need is, is, is an attitude to engage with your customers and to say that, you know, if you need me to be here, I will be here for you. Customers will find their own way to then get through to you. So my takeaway, Anil, is I don't need to see a shopping cart logo or an yes. icon to believe yes. that I'm in commerce. Is that a fair takeaway? That's a fantastic takeaway. And I want to uh, give, you know, uh, uh, strengthen that with one more example. I had a client uh, earlier. This client was in the business of uh, home appliances. You know, not those uh, these little mixers and uh, toasters and stuff like that. Old sure. worldly, I don't want to name the brand, but an old worldly brand. Very, 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 you know, a very beautiful brand. Very, very strong. One of India's leading brands, but old worldly. But the interesting thing was, uh, you know, he, he, uh, the, the client wanted me to recommend a new, like a website and a new corporate site for them. So I was checking various aspects on the site. One of the most fascinating things, and this I'm talking about nearly seven years, six to seven years ago, was he had the most amazing customer care facility, more, much more splendid than any of the other large brands. You would, send a, you would send a message and you would get a reply precisely in two minutes. And so I reached out to him and I said, sir, what technology do you use that you can kind of react back to customers so quickly? And he said that Anil, actually, can I let you in on a little secret? He said, uh, through the day, my secretary has been instructed to reply back within five minutes. Uh, I'm an insomniac, so through the night, I do it. My point is, just two people, him and the CEO and the secretary, ensured a great customer kind of uh, uh, experience in that sense. So uh, just to add to your point, what it takes is attitude. Not that shopping cart not being on a marketplace, not spending tons of money. That, those are secondary things that, that will come into uh, play. So Anil, if it's okay with you, I'm going to share two examples and I'll give your Please. language writers a break. Um, <laughs> and they're very diverse examples. Uh, one was the CMO of a company and he said, you know, we are thinking for months what the hell to do with Cora. This is like when Cora is still a little new in India. Yes. And he said, one day I just, damn it, I started spending half an hour a day on Coda myself. And then he said, I have Lukka time with my team. And I told them, you also start spending time on Coda. And he yes. said, lo and behold, in a few months, we started generating a few hundred leads from Coda. Yes. So he said, there was nothing like rolling up your sleeves, building the right attitude and digging in yourself. Yes. Rather than making a brief and doing that. Totally. So, and open. Upendra, to add to that, uh, none of, uh, you know, these are all means to an end. You know, you don't need to understand the technology behind Coda, but you need to understand that most of these are built to, to create some kind of convenience for end customers. Right. Uh, your, your job is to figure out best case applications. How do I kind of use the platform? Well, most people, uh, you know, tend to look at most of these as, as forbidding. You'd be surprised once you, like, for example, if I say Reddit or if I say any other new channel out there, uh, how easy it is. And we, we, we just need to concentrate on how does that interact with your end consumer and what can you do there? It, it can simplify a lot of things for you. 
Upendra? Uh, Anil, your, sorry, your line got a little staggered for a moment. Sorry, no problem. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay, the other one is, you know, we often talk about digitization, right? So I remember I was doing one major program and we were doing this major transformation exercise. And then after the entire, it was about claims. And after the entire thing got over, we were wondering why the needle wasn't moving. Uh, you know, lo and behold, what is happening? So the entire process was digitized. But when the final high value claim checks needed to be signed off, uh, it needed to come to the CXO levels. Yes. And we were sitting in our meetings. So finally, one bugger had the gall to come up and say, you know, wonderful job, but you know why the needle is not moving? I asked him why. Because you buggers are not signing it off in time. Totally. totally. So we spent a huge amount of money getting the entire thing done. And then we figured out that we needn't have spent a bunch of that money to get that done. A little behavioral change in this of just saying, getting my claim out in time is my most important thing. Whether I'm in Hong Kong or whether I'm in a meeting, I'm going to drop everything. And suddenly there was a behavior change, right? From the CEO to the CX or the finance manager. It became the body language, the rule de rigueur. If a claim check comes, the first thing you do is you sign it. You're going to the washroom, stop going to the washroom, sign it and then go. Yes. So that's a very, very interesting point that you raised, uh, Anupendra. And for anybody uh, listening in, uh, another tip is design thinking and customer experience. You know, it's amazing and, and it's, uh, uh, you know, we go abroad and we go to a railway station or to an airport. We, you know, there's something hidden that happens to us and we get out of security very quickly. You know, we end up getting onto the train without a rush and we're like, wow, this, these places are so beautiful. But the thing is, uh, you know, there is design thinking at play there. While, uh, and I don't, I'm, 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 I, I, you know, I really wish that India took its customer experience a bit more seriously because there are a million opportunities to improve your customer experience. From every form we fill to every, uh, you know, uh, every button we click to every television knob we turn to every road, uh, what do you call it, uh, you know, every uh, road that is designed. I think there's an opportunity for a better customer experience. Things are changing and uh, the, the, the newer digital brands are making a huge difference. But, uh, the, you know, but there is still uh, 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 lots to go in that sense. Okay, and Anil, I'm picking up another question coming from the audience. Yes. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, it's more unfortunately, uh, when we talk about marketing, we talk about consumer, we talk about many of our conversations are still South Bombay, South Delhi, and so on and so forth. Um, any experience of serving consumers in markets where the digital penetration is not that high, where smartphone penetration is not high, and what can brands do with digital uh, for those audiences? And what is digital? So I'll summarize a very long question. Yeah. Uh, I don't like calling them rural consumers. Uh, there are segments of consumers where access to data, access to smartphones is not as high. It could be in Dharavi, it could be in Ghatkopar, it could be in uh, Barabanki, right? Sure. Uh, any interesting examples of what brands are using and what is they doing to engage these consumers, which is sure. possibly not fully digital, but what kind of stuff are they doing? Sure. So interesting question again, Upendra. Uh, 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 I'd like to start off with some kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, broad statistics. So the Indian government is doing a lot to ensure, you know, every citizen has uh, a bank account and every citizen has, uh, you know, uh, access to gas, access to, uh, you know, one uh, uh, ration across the country and stuff like that. Uh, your uh, uh, PAN and other numbers. The moment you get onto any one of these, whether you like it or no, you are digitized. So, you know, the fact that you are digitally, electronically monitorable means that you are digitized. That's point number one. The second level is uh, telco and bandwidth. Uh, I, can't, I can't begin to tell you 
uh, what's happening here. It's it's literally it's a race between us and China, and 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 China is far ahead of us. But uh, you know our numbers are increasing as well. Uh, smartphone penetration, uh, feature phone to uh, uh, smartphone. So with every year we will see more and more numbers and more and more people coming into the fold. That's point number two. Uh, point number three is uh, every large publisher out there is trying to convert uh, most of the content from English to multiple Indian languages. That itself will ensure that uh, you know uh, video and voice uh, is playing a large role in ensuring that uh, more of these people get converted. Having said that, uh, uh, there are still uh, uh, a lot of campaigns that have been done to connect with his audience. The only thing is like you said, the South Bombay, South Delhi mindset of digital for us is looking at stuff on our uh, one lakh uh, iPhone X and seeing, uh, you know, going to vice.com and forwarding a few of those to our friends on Facebook. But there is a very, very digi different digital consumer when you go up country. Uh, these are consumers where uh, one mobile phone is used by multiple members of the family and they have time slots for usage. So the wife uses it from four to six and the husband uses it from 10 to four and the kid uses it for one hour in the evening. So there are, there are stuff like that. Uh, uh, for people like those, one big campaign that comes to my mind is uh, two campaigns. One is a campaign called Pocket Dentist that was done by Colgate. The second one is Khan Khajura Tashan, which was done by Unilever where in media dark uh, areas of India, uh, you could literally get people to consume advertising by giving a missed call. So uh, when you gave uh, an, a missed call, uh, you gave the consumer X number of free minutes of audio content, which was bookended by brand content, which I thought was really, yes. really fascinating. And these are just two of the ideas. I, there are uh, 20 more, uh, uh, you know, across. So, there is a big, uh, you know, if you uh, from ITCs, e to uh, to e-commerce for the rural areas. There are companies that have set up which which, which you have which you and me wouldn't even have heard of, but they they are operating on their own models to ensure that last mile connectivity for people who buy stuff, uh, wholesaler e-commerce. There's tons of stuff happening. Uh, so, Anil, if we need to uh, unlearn and reimagine the world. Uh, should we stop looking at the world as urban and rural and start having a digital lens to this, at least for marketers? Uh, honestly, my... Uh, because there are iPhone X users sitting in the inner districts of Andhra Pradesh. I've seen it. And I'm sure so have you. You know, Upendra, uh, uh, in the old simplistic world, it was physically possible to read, uh, you know, a few uh, marketing magazines and, and between the Kotla and, uh, you know, a few other books, you had a rough worldview. In this new world, because you're talking about, I don't know, 300 million smartphones, um, uh, 900 million uh, pen mobile, uh, you know, mobile penetration in the sense uh, uh, people with uh, some kind of mobile connectivity. I don't know what the numbers are and growing. Uh, I think it's time to, uh, you know, to turn to AI and ML and, and data is going to be key in, imagine I would love to be sitting on the Facebook dashboard looking at what's happening in this country. You know, how many people are talking politics, how many people, how many men, how many women, how are they kind of uh, latching on to stuff? I can assure you, we would be shocked. India wouldn't be as black and white as we think to be, which is like you rightly said, you know, 10 pockets of urbanization and then, you know, the dark interiors. No, uh, I, 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 there could be some really interesting things happening there and interesting trendy things, entrepreneurship. Yeah businesses, um, uh, new, uh, new models. TikTok is happening there. TikTok or happening. was happening there. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. All right. So this is a question from a common friend and I shall keep her unnamed. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, how is it for creative folks working from home? How does it work? Isn't there the founder of, you know, you need to be sitting at a whiteboard on a beanbag and 
crashing with each other and tearing each other out and abusing the uh, client servicing manager where does the inspiration come from so the jury is out on that one and i've been doing my own <laughs> private poll on this uh, asking a bunch of uh, creative people and 50% of them uh, you know bitch about it 50% are you them, serving digital liquor <laughs> 50% of them uh, you know we shouldn't be speaking about those things in uh, you know these kind of settings but uh, uh, personally if you ask me uh, uh, we feed off on energy and that's the core yeah. to our business you know and there is a limit to which you know so there are there are many pluses you get to spend time at or at home with your family you know you can be uh, conducting your entire business in your underpants you can do a whole lot of stuff but i think one one fundamental uh, what do you call lack is the lack of feeding of people's energy and and no amount of large screens and uh, high definition uh, what do you call platforms like this can take away from that got it so anil we just pick up one or two more questions i don't want to take up too much of your time as well Uh, so one question is what's the future of traditional media in marketing uh i would imagine he's referring to or he or she sorry uh is referring to out of home television and so on sure so the interesting thing is uh i think uh, you know once we step out of this pandemic and look outside all these traditional channels have also been changing so television is moving into interactive tv and 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 uh, you know uh, the content remains the same so for me netflix is the new television and and as we speak many more advanced versions of of this is being already in the pipeline uh, i i see a huge deal of uh, interactivity going on the ability to fuse commerce Uh, uh you know so the medium of visual storytelling in 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 the motion picture format for me is a fantastic space where you will see a lot of action happening going into the future uh, outdoor is also transformed so outdoor is actually become uh, you know transforming itself into electronic point of sale uh you know all these interesting interactive hoardings that are happening uh every um, radio is moving into podcasts is moving into the spotifys of the world so the only thing is we don't seem to recognize these newer forms of traditional medium but the, like uh, uh, like some famous man wrote the future is already here it is not evenly distributed yet touche very well said okay yeah. there's another question from anmol uh basically he's saying there's a huge market for cloud products how can an agency like yours help them okay uh we are so all i think the broader question is uh what's happening with cloud is that becoming your mainstay is that your core dna what's happening yeah so the interesting thing is uh, you know uh, we are working along with our partners uh, to help brick and mortar businesses transfer stuff onto the cloud uh, you know it could be their business frameworks it could be their data it could be many of their uh, tools and processes that they use uh, so the the the, the 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 cloud guys are doing their job we are doing their job and it will take all of us to push to get uh, you know these uh, brands onto on onto a, a cloud kind of an environment and honestly like i said it is there's a lot of uh, 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 concept selling there is a lot of uh, 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 push that is required to help these brands get on and that's what we are currently doing uh, the only advantage is if you you are looking at the, the 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 infrastructure part of it agencies are also looking at how do brands kind of make this transformation how does this impact many of their brand building processes how do you use the data and loop it back into many of the decision making processes uh, that's where we kind of help and step in but Got we are it. on the same path all right sanil so you're a rock star so i thought you should leave with a bang and <laughs> no better bang than asking you for your some predictions of the future so it's a rapid fire three questions sure and the first one is when is covid going to end 
I don't, uh, you know, I, I foresee it to be with us uh, at uh, the all, uh, you know, to the best part of 2021. Uh, sure. And hopefully 2022, we will find some cure. Because honestly, it's not just about the cure. It's about how do you take the cure to some 7 billion people. No, fine. No, so to be fair, jokes apart. Um, so my last question to you, Anil, is for business leaders and marketing heads, how should their next 12 months be very different and productively so vis-a-vis their earlier 12 months? Yeah. I, uh, you know, uh, my big uh, uh, thing that I keep telling all my client partners is uh, go to where the consumer is. This is a great opportunity to look at your business from a consumer in perspective as opposed to a brand out perspective. And what I mean by a consumer in perspective is at the end of the day, you make money when you sell something to your customer and your customer has has a delightful experience. If the customer can't come to you, you should go to where the customer is. And, and therefore, if that means tweaking your business model, if that means pivoting, if that, if that means getting onto new channels, if that means e-commerce, whatever it may take for you to kind of do that, because the worst thing to do is to sit tight and say, I will only resume this once the, uh, you know, once this uh, uh, coronavirus gets over, because we have no idea when it's getting over. Got it. All right, Anil, it's been fabulous talking to you. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed. I'm sure we're not going to take another 25 years to catch up again. Yeah, so, no, and, uh, I, I, I'm sure now that we've kind of caught up, we'll catch up uh, sooner. And I think we already have something planned. Uh, sure. And uh, 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 a real pleasure talking to you. So thank you for this opportunity. Okay. Thank you. And best wishes to you, your family, and your team. Stay safe. And a huge thanks to the uh, to the students, uh, the Alcom members, uh, call out to Arvind and Himanshi, you guys put in a lot of effort uh, to get in folks like Anil and myself in a very disciplined manner into a call. Uh, thanks to you for that, guys. Yes, I want to thank Simsa and uh, all the students of Simsa. Wish you guys all the best and uh, thank you once again.